Welcome to the Knife Junkie Podcast, your weekly dose of knife news and information about knives and knife collecting. Here's your hosts, Jim Person and Bob the Knife Junkie DeMarco. Welcome to the Knife Junkie Podcast, the place for knife newbies and knife junkies to learn about knives and knife collecting. And Bob, a full supplemental edition for us to talk about this week. It Mm -hmm. just continues to not ever surprise me the amount of nice stuff that we can that we can talk about it always surprises me how much discussion there needs to be about this topic you know right. it's it's something that just keeps unfolding and you know what jim i think i've normalized this kind of talk around the office i mean hmm. there are uh, what there does are that mean se- explain that well okay there are I, I feel like i've trained my office over the last nine years there are several people that uh, when i get a new knife I have to, hey, dude, you got to see this. You're going to love this. And I go up and I show it to them and I get different reactions. You know, it always, I, I only ever bring it to people I know are going to appreciate it. One guy's this very big, tough guy. <laughs> so I always give him the knives to see if they fit in his hand. Uh, well, let me, let me just tell you, I, I bring it around. People love it. People appreciate it. But that has begun to seep around the office in general because everybody knows when they need a knife to cut their sandwich or open a package. They always ask me and it's always kind of like, hey, Bob, you know anyone with a knife? (laughs) (laughs) And, uh, of course, I love it and I I get to, you know. Pull out all eight knives you have on your body and say, which one do you think will work for you? Which which is most appropriate for this individual? Well, anyway, I came to work yesterday and uh, my boss handed me a box. She said, meet me in the garage. I'm like, "Uh, okay. And she handed me a box and I opened it up and there are two. uh, There's a pocket knife. There's a Puma hunting knife. And uh, there's a big old hatchet. And um, she said her son needs his his knives sharpened. And he just found this hatchet. And he wants me to keep it for self-defense while he's away at school. And I was like, right on. Because I know I got this kid into knives. Because when he graduated from high school, I gave him a pocket knife. I gave him my my Rake P801 SF, a great little EDC blade. And kind of got him hooked on that and uh, got him a couple of others for other achievements over the past few years. And now he's sending me hatchets and hunting knives to sharpen. So cool. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, uh, my, uh, my boss was definitely not a knife person before I, I came to the office, but I can see her softening. Right. <laughs> well, that's good though, you know, and, and, yeah. uh, and, and sharpening the knives and taking, you know, the spa treatments, uh, kind of building that uh, little sideline business for you. I know you're not charging them, I'm sure, but, yeah. uh, you know, uh, giving you more practice and that kind of thing to kind of get into a, a sideline gig, if you will. Exactly. Exactly. It's nice to, uh, nice to surprise people, you know, with a, with something that, uh, that can help them out. Right. I remember the uh, the one knife you did for me, I don't know, six months ago or whatever, the, the stag handled knife. Mm-hmm. You know, I said, you know, give me the spa treatment because that's what you called it because uh, <laughs> I was going to sell it. And I remember what it looked like when I gave it to you. And I remember what it looked like when it came back. And it was just uh, it was just awesome. And it was oh. sharp. And, you know, and, and it helped me uh, essentially triple the value or, or triple the price I was going to ask uh, on, on that knife. So, uh there is some benefit to to the spa treatment and to the sharpening and that kind of thing. So, thanks. And oh, my pleasure. And when you're doing that kind of work, uh, especially to an old knife, and you start to reveal what the original look of it was, um, I don't know. It's kind of it's kind of a neat process because you wonder what all the all the years and all the experiences that got that rust on that blade or that uh, you know made this knife look old mm-hmm. and this knife that you're restoring. It's uh, it's kind of interesting to think about all the things that knife may have been through to get to that point. Right. Still need to get you the uh, couple of most recent knives I've uh, I've bought a couple of month or two ago. Though, so. Yeah, I've been meaning to ask you. Did you you didn't sell those yet? No, I haven't uh, haven't done anything with them. They're just uh, sitting here in my uh, my eBay pile to list. <laughs> so I need to give them to you just to kind of you know spa treatment light, I guess, or whatever. But uh, right, I can't imagine how how you can sit there and let that beautiful. 1970s buck 110 sit in a in a sale pile it would be sitting right next to my keyboard well i mean the 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 death pile as uh as us online retailers uh, or sellers say you know the the stuff that's that's right here waiting to be listed for sale my death pile is right here to the to the left of me so i can i can see it so it's not on the desktop but it's right there you call it the death pile yeah the death pile because oh. uh i don't know i don't know how that term came about but uh it's kind of what they call eBay resellers, you know, have this pile of merchandise because yeah. we we find it easy to go buy stuff to resell, 
but then it takes work to get it listed to sale because you have to write out descriptions, take pictures, you have to list it. So this this pile of money, it's kind of this death pile you have sitting right. right there. It's not it's not doing anything for you if you don't have it listed. So oh, that's anyway. interesting. I, I was thinking, uh, yeah, this knife is dead to me. I'm going to sell it. Oh, right absolutely not. Pile. Absolutely <laughs> not. Yeah, yeah. I love all uh, three of those knives that I bought, but uh, yeah. I think I'll be keeping the the buck uh, one ten yes. and uh, selling the others too because that's uh, that was the original purpose that I bought them. So, I but anyway, a solid plan. Yeah. All right. Anyway, let's move on. I want to remind you that today's podcast is brought to you by Audible. You can get a free audiobook download and a 30-day free trial of Audible if you just go to audibletrial.com slash knife junkie. Over 180,000 titles to choose from for your iPhone, Android, Kindle, or MP3 player. Again, go to audibletrial.com slash knife junkie. Get a free audiobook when you do. You're listening to the Knife Junkie podcast. And now here's the Knife Junkie with the Knife Life News. So, Jim, as you know, we just talked to David C. Anderson uh, on the Knife Junkie podcast interview show, and he mentioned the catalog that they just came out with, the paper catalog. And I'm sure that there are other Knife Junkies out there like myself who foamed at the mouth at his description of this thing because... I don't know. I'm, I'm of a certain generation. I love paper catalogs. I love the feeling of paper. I love books. I like to thumb through pages. And Knife Center has just come out with a 1,744-page full-color catalog of basically everything that they sell, everything that's on the website and a few things that aren't even on the website, apparently. I, w- I wouldn't call that a paper catalog. That's like, a, I don't know, what what you even call it? <laughs> 1,700 pages. It looks bigger than a uh, it looks bigger than a phone book, but I know that the pages are thicker than a phone book. I mean, wow. this thing, you know, Incredible. this is like an interrogation room book, <laughs> and it's originally on sale for twenty two bucks. Right now, it's on uh, there. They were selling it for twenty two bucks. I just went to the website. It's on sale for for fourteen ninety five, and I'm gonna have to get one. I mean. It's rare. I get the Smoky Mountain Knife Works catalog every month, and it's a, a, an extremely uh, truncated version of of their um, in uh, their inventory. It's still nice to thumb through, but I don't get any paper catalogs from anyone else anymore. And uh, or occasionally Cold Steel, and I love that catalog too, as you know. But this is a definite purchase on my and and when I buy it, I'll have to throw a knife onto the order because you can't order something from the Knife Center and not get a blade in return. Absolutely. Holy cow, I'm still I'm just speechless still, uh, you know, the the size of that catalog. Yeah. That's got to be a very expensive publication. I'm I'm not shilling for Knife Center, but 15 bucks is a pretty good deal. It, it seems um I'm definitely going to grab one. Well, and even if you didn't buy any knives just to have that um as a, a resource for being able to see all the different knife names and the the pictures of the knives, that kind of thing just as a kind of a historical document. Seems yeah. like that would be worth the price just there. And if you buy, uh, sell, or trade on the secondary market, it's a great resource for, um, uh, you know, for specs if if you're listing it on a forum mm. or right. for um, also just for an idea of how to price it. Well, knifecenter.com. Knifecenter.com is where you can find that catalog and knives and David C. Anderson videos and all that kind of good stuff. And uh, Great interview. That was number 76. So if you missed that, go to the knifejunkie.com slash 76 and you can hear that interview right on the website. Also, uh, Knife Life News, Bob, you want to talk about a little bit about Benchmade? Yep. Yep. Uh, Benchmade is uh, coming out with their new bug out and bailout models. And by new, I mean updated materials. They have the bug out coming out in an all black version. It's uh, very fetching to the eye, if you ask me. The bug out 535BK-2. And the changes they're making with this uh, is primarily on the handle. The handle, they're replacing that grivery, that thin blue kind of uh, nerve-wracking <laughs> grivery with what they call CF Elite, which is a, a sort of carbon fiber blended into reinforced nylon, like uh, like grivery. So it's basically carbon fiber injected grivery and injected is not the right right word now the way it's described uh, in an article on knife news when discussing uh, discussing it with Matt glass of benchmade he mentions that it's integrated in a, in a way that that you don't see the weave on the outside 
but you get the tensile strength and the strength, overall strength of carbon fiber throughout. So it's still basically going to look like a black rivalry handle, but it's just going to be stronger and uh, more rigid. And that's one of the main complaints that customers have given over the years, uh, over the past couple of years about the bug out. The bug out is, is, uh, is, you know, the, uh, talk of the town for that, for that company. It's the, I think it's their, I love that knife. I have a bug out. It's my favorite bench made. And I think it's their top seller now. Uh, but people freq- frequently would mention how the handle feels like, you know, you can squeeze it and you can see it flex and everything. And, you know, it just might not be uh, ample strength wise for the kind of work people put their knives through. So this is a case where Benchmade was reacting to customer, I don't want to say demand, but customer uh, feedback and uh, gave them what they want. I think that's awesome. Uh, the blade is still S30V, and uh, it's DLC coated and, and all that. And I guess it's it, it's a little bit lighter. So you have that. But bug out is already super, super light. Also, the bailout. Now, the bailout was the knife that came out hot on the heels of the bug out. It's sort of similar, but less backpacky, more tactical. <laughs> it's oh, it's a, okay. a tanto blade, slightly longer. And it was meant to have the same quality of, of sort of lightness, thinness, and discreteness that the bug out has, but would be more um, suited to a uh, military or law enforcement application uh, with the blade shape and such. So this was the knife that came out in 3V. 3V is mostly a blade steel used for uh, larger fixed blade knives, knives that, that receive some impact or uh, it's a semi-stainless steel. It's tough. It's more suited for uh, high impact activities, and people were excited to see it on a small tactical knife to see what it would do, how it would react. And this is the knife that uh, had some heat treat issues. Uh, some some customers uh, uh, investigating the, the the hardness of the blade didn't didn't like how Benchmade heat treated the three V. They thought they should have heat treated it uh, differently. And uh, so this is another case where. Um, where Benchmade reacted, and I th- I think reacted in a great way. They changed both the handle and the blade steel. Hmm. Now, for the blade steel, they got rid of the 3V, which was causing them a problem, and they moved to M4, which is a similar steel uh, in that it's, uh, you know, semi-stainless, but this one has, uh, you know, excels more on the edge retention side and less on the toughness side. And really, I mean, if you think about it, for a small, light pocket knife, that's probably where you want to put all your eggs or more of your eggs is in that basket, the edge retention basket. Um, chances are you're not, you're not doing activities with that light pocket knife that requires uh, that toughness uh, necessarily. Uh, on this, they added, they, they changed the handle from grivery to aluminum, which I love. I love aluminum. I love how it wears the anodization and I love how it feels and it's nice and light and, uh, and it's more rigid. And then at the end, the backspacer, protrudes beyond the pommel to form a lanyard hole. And that's something that people have been hot or cold about. Some people mm-hmm. like it, some people don't. Uh, but they really, uh, they they uh, they doubled down on that and added a glass breaker to the tip of it. I thought maybe they would have eliminated that and gone for a different, uh, more bug out like lanyard uh, hole. But instead, they added a glass breaker and kind of made it more tactical or mm-hmm. more law enforcement-y. Well, the lanyard, uh, the hole for the lanyard, I assume the, the knife junkie likes that because you like to put lanyards on some of your knives if they're true keepers. Yes, that's true. That's true. I, I do like it. And actually, I like I like the the concept of having that uh, that hard piece of metal protruding beyond the handle as like a little little noggin knocker or or glass breaker. If you well, know. when you get in your knife fight and you, you know, you need that other end, you can, you know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And I have found through my vast experience knife fighting that I need that other end. You know. That's right. Hey, uh, I was going to ask you 3V versus M4, but I think you did a pretty good job of kind of describing that. But uh got to say, I just, I, I just love air quotes here, love these names, 3V <laughs> and M4. Yeah. I, you know what? I Sometimes, I, or I, maybe all the time, the the V maybe that stands for vanadium. The M maybe that stands for molybdenum, or, or one of those. <laughs> things. I, I don't know how they come up with these names, but you know, I'm pretty sure it has to do with the with their key element. You know that they're pushing, right? But, but um, I, I like them when they're longer, like eight CR thirteen MOV. <laughs> right. Not that I particularly dig that steel, but I like how long it is, and 
and uh, just rolls off the tongue. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Do you like the, uh, the the bailout better now than the bug out? Well, I don't have the bailout, but I think I will get this new model. The aluminum handles really speak to me, and I, I have to be 100% honest. The 3V, if it were, if it was actually soft, um, I, I wouldn't have felt it anyway because I'm not a hard user. Mm. Uh, but I love the idea of the aluminum handles. I do love the, the idea of the glass breaker. They're carrying over that small clip from the bailout that, that I love. And uh, I'm a sucker for a Tanto. So, yeah, bring it on. What's the uh, ballpark price range? Do we know? Do you um, have that in front of me? Let's see. I, I think the uh, I don't, but but bailouts in the past are like one one twenty to one forty somewhere in that, and I think okay. the uh, bailout is like maybe in the one sixty area. I don't know. I, I actually don't know. So not too much price difference. Seems Correct. like they're they're pretty pretty close in price. Right, right. It's not one of those benchmades where they where they put a different steel on it and G ten and charge three times the price. Gotcha. Okay. Let's move on. Another uh, subject in Knife Life News. We want to talk about uh, Lion Steel. I, I think we've talked about them occasionally a couple of times, but they've yeah. got a new sl- new slip joint you want to talk about, the Thrill? Yes. You know, Lion Steel out of Italy has uh, has always produced very, uh, very well-made, um, high-performance sort of tactical knives and, uh, and other kind of folding knives, locking knives. Uh, but in the last couple of years, they've been on a slip joint tear, making these really, really nice uh, slip joints. I only have one, though I would like to venture out into the rest of their product range in the slip joint side. I have the Cold Steel Gatano. I've been talking about a lot recently that it's like a Navaja. It looks like a Spanish Navaja. Um, but they have a new, uh, the last slip joint they came out with in 2019, I think is just dropping now, called the Thrill. And uh, this really looks like a modern folding knife, uh, except it's a slip joint. And so it comes in either an aluminum handle or a sculpted titanium handle. And it's got this long, slender drop point blade. That's uh, it's a it's a beautiful blade. And it's got pulls on both sides. Those are called French cut pulls. They're not uh, they're not shaped like fingernails. They're just shaped like um, long, thin slots. And um, it's M390, a steel everyone loves. And I think is a great idea for EDC because if you're doing light work and you have M390 and it's sharp, you probably never have to sharpen it or only only very occasionally. Uh, anyway, the, the two uh, USPs, the universal selling propositions of these two knives, are, uh, are unique selling propositions of these knives are the solid integral construction. So they're, they're milled out of solid pieces of aluminum or titanium, which is unusual for a uh, traditional knife. And also they use their H-W-A-Y-L clip, whale clip, which is a interesting system that allows the clip to hide into the inside the handle so that you don't feel it when hmm. it's in use. Um, and yeah, and it doesn't protrude from the side if you're just, you know, carrying it loose in your pocket. But if you want the, the clip, you press a button on the opposite side, it sort of pops out of the handle scale and you know, you you uh, slide it over your the edge of your pocket. Interesting. Yeah. So uh, this is a truly to me. You know, everyone uses the term modern traditional. That's a traditional style knife, slip joint kind of knife uh, in modern materials using modern engineering and design. This is the epitome of modern traditional because the thing it really looks like a, a titanium frame lock folder. You know, when you look at it, it's just totally modern it just doesn't have a lock so where does this fall on your list of all the knives you have to buy now you know what jim it's it's not really there it's uh, not really there i i do want to you know i don't have unlimited funds and uh really do, <laughs> you might not know that from my uh, the way the knives come in but uh i want some more lion steel slip joints but this is low on the list i want the mm. i want a couple i want their best man i want the dom i want a couple of other ones Mm. Um, before I would go for this, but right. I love I love hearing and reading about the innovation. Well, what do you think about the uh, Lion Steel Thrill Slip Joint? Uh, call the listener line at seven two four four six six four four eight seven. That's seven two four four six six four four eight seven. Leave us your thoughts about Lion Steel or the Lion Steel's new Thrill Slip Joint. What you think if you're going to be buying it or 
actually any thoughts, any comments, any questions, uh, we'd love to hear from you on the listener line at 724-466-4487. And uh, regular listeners know that uh, we've made a commitment between Bob and myself that uh, when we get these comments in, we'll get them on the next episode of the Knife Junkie podcast. So uh, call in. Let us hear your thoughts. All right, Bob, finally in uh, Knife Life news, some interesting um, Kickstarter news, I guess. A new laser edge reader for sharpening knives, and they are uh, already, uh, at the time of this recording, with uh, just under two weeks left, they are already over their $8,000 goal for their Kickstarter. Nice. Yeah, we talked about this the other night on uh, Thursday Night Knives, this laser knife edge reader. It's a uh, it's a really um, uh, innovative device by a professional sharpener named Ken Leonard. And uh, really what it does is uh, uses laser technology to read your edge and tell you exactly at what, what angle it's ground. Uh, you fit the blade into a a thing that looks kind of like a three-dimensional protractor. You can you can look it up and find it on uh, Knife News or or elsewhere. But it fits into this frame. A laser points directly at the edge, and the edge splits the laser. Now, the two beams of the laser that are split shoot off in angled directions onto uh, a demarcated curve that has all the angles on it. And so you can read right away. Because the angle, uh, because the laser is split across your cutting edge and refracted onto a gradated surface, you can see exactly what angle you've sharpened it at. You can either listen to that and try and figure out what I'm saying or look at the picture and get it like right away. <laughs> but <laughs> anyway, uh, it looks like a really, really interesting system, something that uh, edge geeks will, will definitely uh, have to get. But apparently it says here that the laser can tell you other things too. It can tell you if your edge is dull if the uh, if the refracted laser beams are fuzzy or um, or blurred, that means the edge is dull. Uh, it'll give you two reflections for a double bevel, and convex edges uh, create wider bands of light. So this thing is not just telling you uh, telling you what angle it's at; it's telling you the state that your edge is in, also, which is kind of cool. Anyway, so we did this Kickstarter, and while we were talking about it on Thursday Night Knives. Uh, two people, uh, two of the commenters, uh, at least that we know about, at least that we know about dipped out of the show for a minute to go jump on this Kickstarter and, uh, order it. So yeah, uh, hopefully, uh, one of those guys will tell us what they found out you know, once they, once they receive it. Yeah. Like we said, less than, uh, this than two weeks left on that. So again, I think, uh, as you said, Knife News has the story. Uh, several other uh, knife websites has the story. You can find it on the kickstarter.com uh, site as well. But uh, well over the $8,000 goal with uh, still time left for the Laser Knife Edge Reader, which, according to Kickstarter, is a handheld tool for knife sharpeners and users to instantly and easily measure the angle of a knife's edge. So there you go. <laughs> the wow. laser knife edge reader. I mean, technology and knives could it get any better, Bob? I know, I know. And the, <laughs> and what you just read could have uh, eliminated the last three minutes of yammering as I, <laughs> as I tried to describe what that thing was. I just wanted to hear you yammer. So okay. <laughs> just put me in the hot seat for a minute. That's right. You know you're a knife junkie if you have your latest knife purchase shipped to your office so your wife doesn't know. Speaking of impressive cutting edges. Uh, Jim, I just received my Hinder XM18 Spanto regrind back from Josh at Razor Edge. As you remember, we spoke to Josh. I can't remember what episode he was on. Great guy doing amazing work modifying knives, but mostly regrinding, regrinding blades. And oh my God, I got to say. So when I sent him this, my, my Hinder XM18 Spanto three and a half inch, it was uh, sharp because I had made sure it was sharp. Uh, but it was really kind of a pry bar. I sent it to him. I said, can you hollow grind out the main bevel and then, and then, you know, leave, leave the tip flat ground and make this thing as slicey and sharp as you can. And he sent it back. He did beautiful work. I mean, just, I'll, I'll talk about what it looks like first. You see that beautiful hollow ground edge meeting the flat ground edge up at the front. And it is, it looks like a straight razor. It's gorgeous. And then he cut a swedge into the top. And then when you look at it from the front, it also looks like a straight razor. It is so thinly, deeply hollow ground. 
and it comes to such a perfect edge. This is now officially my sharpest knife. I mean, without without a doubt. I mean, I've been testing and on all the materials. I I you know I do a lot of zip ties, uh, especially around the the holiday season. It, it it's like these zip ties aren't even there. Um, in that sort of uh, weird weak cellophane they put on meat packages. It slices through like it's not even there. It doesn't get hung up at all. Um, I bumped it into my finger just like lightly and got a little nick, a little cut. This thing is amazing. So I, I don't know. He has turned this knife into something that I cherished and loved because of its legacy. I love that it's made in Ohio. I love that it's handmade. I love the way it looks. I like Mr. Hinderer. I like the innovations. I love the toughness of it, but the the one thing I didn't like about it was how it cut. And now it is just now it's it's up there among my favorite knives. So I I can't sing uh, Josh's praises uh, too loudly here. It does right. awesome work. And now I'm thinking of what I can send back to him. Now here's the conundrum <laughs> I'm in. He he will not do my XM24s, which is what I really want him to do because uh, the the value of the knife is higher than he's willing to replace. I, he has a threshold. I can't remember mm. what it is. But this is just above that. But uh, I makes think sense. I'm gonna... Makes sense. Yeah. yeah, it does. I think I will beg him though and say, if you mess it up and have to replace it, just replace it up to your threshold, and I'll <laughs> cover the rest. Because I don't think he'll mess it up, and he does such amazing work. And I think right. other hinderers deserve this treatment. Well, that's uh, RazorEdgeKnives.com. RazorEdgeKnives.com. If you want to. Uh, uh, take advantage of any of uh, Josh's work or check out his website. And if you're going to listen to that podcast that Bob mentioned, that was uh, the Knife Junkie podcast, episode number 39. And you can find that at theknifejunkie.com slash 39, theknifejunkie.com slash 39. And I want to remind our listeners, Bob, that uh, you mentioned uh, Thursday Night Knives live show a minute or so ago, a couple of minutes ago. And I did want to uh, Remind everybody that if they want to subscribe to the Knife Chunkies YouTube channel, which you can see the Thursday Night Lives show live on YouTube as well as Facebook and on our webpage. But if you want to subscribe to the YouTube channel, just go to the knifejunkie.com slash YT subscribe, knifejunkie.com slash YT subscribe. Thursday Night Knives, I just got to say, has become a very valuable experience. It's fun. I love it. I love how you're producing it. It looks great. Looks like a looks like a legitimate news show, but about knives. Um, but I have to say, in talking to people in both the comments and then also the co-hosts, I'm learning so much doing this Thursday night knives. So I, I really, I really hope people start tuning in uh, more and and join the conversation because it's a blast. It really is. Well, it's a, it's fun for me to be behind the scenes too and uh, hearing everything going on and. Uh really learning that way. But I, I got to admit, the thing that uh, is really most uh, most fun, and I know that's not, not proper English, but uh, is getting all the comments from the viewers. And we mm-hmm. try to put as many of those comments up on screen and, and let you riff on those uh, as best we can. So I think that's what makes the show unique is getting that, uh, that viewer engagement. And uh, if viewers will stay tuned, uh, maybe in the next week or two or a month or so, We'll have an opportunity for anybody watching to join in and actually be on the show. How cool would that be? We just roll in a guest, That's right. talk to them, get their get their thoughts, and then they dip, and we continue. That's an awesome. That'll be great. Yeah, so stay tuned to that. Have a question or maybe you just have a comment? Give us a call at 724-466-4487. We'll answer your question on an upcoming episode of the Knife Junkie Podcast. That number again. Seven two four four six six four four eight seven. Hey Bob, before we uh, wrap up the uh, supplemental podcast, one of the things that uh, we had talked about was making sure that we promoted knife shows, and we've been um, kind of dropping the ball on that a little bit. So I uh, wanted to take a minute, just kind of uh, mention a couple of the uh, the knife shows. Uh, if you want to find any of those, our friends over at Knife Magazine have the ultimate list, and that's where these are coming from, knifemagazine.com. You can find all the knife shows as well as uh, club meetings and that kind of thing at knifemagazine.com slash events. But, of course, uh, I want to remind everybody that uh, SHOT Show, January 21 through 24th, that's going to be uh, in Las Vegas at the Sands Expo, followed right up by the Las Vegas Custom Knife Show, 
Friday, January 24th. That starts at uh, 1 o'clock. A VIP pass gets you in at 11 a.m. That goes on uh, Saturday as well. That's at the uh, Palace Station Hotel and Casino, of course, in Las Vegas. Then uh, Saturday, January 25th, Sunday, January 26th, at uh, in St. Louis, Missouri, it's the Gateway Area Knife Club Cutlery Fair. That's easy to say, the Gateway Area Knife Club Cutlery Fair, 25th and 26th of January. That's in uh, St. Louis, Missouri. Information there at uh, their website, gakc.org. Then we move down to uh, Florida, the sunny state of Florida, where it would be nice to be during winter. Uh, the Gator Cutlery Show is uh, Friday, January 31st through Sunday, February 2nd. Friday's hours 10 to 5, Saturday 9 to 5, Sunday 9 to 3. Uh, that's going to be at the RP Funding Center, which is uh, formerly known as the Lakeland Center, that in uh, Lakeland, Florida. More information there at GatorCutlery.com. And then uh, the uh, Spirit of the Blade Custom Knife Show uh, in Ohio at the Miami County Fairgrounds in Troy. That's March 6th and 7th. But again, uh, promoting uh, some of the knife shows from uh, the great list at knifemagazine.com slash events. And uh, put a special offer out there. Not really a special because you can do it at any time. If you have a knife show uh, that you would like to promote, that you're an organizer of, call the listener line at 724-466-4487. Leave a recorded message promoting the show, telling folks the hours, the cost, uh, website, all that kind of stuff. We'll get it here on the Knife Junkie podcast free of charge. And if you would like to do an extended interview to talk about your show and promote it, again, all free of charge, uh, call the listener line and uh, leave Bob or myself a message with your contact information, and we'll get back with you to, to do the interview and uh, promote that knife show for you. We would love to do that. So, Bob, a lot of great knife shows constantly going on. That uh, 2020 is our year, man. Yes, knife it shows, is. shows, knife shows. Yes, it is. Through. Yes, it is. And for sure, I mean, you know, we were just talking before we started here. We have to we have to uh, engage. Uh, we have to embark on our blade planning. Uh, right. I am really looking forward to that. I'm really looking forward to meeting listeners and anyone else who's there who's, you know, who's in any way engaged with this show and definitely looking forward to meeting uh, the knife makers and industry leaders and, and yeah. such that we've talked to here. Maybe we should uh, plan a, a listener meetup uh, as we uh, look at uh, going to Blade Show. That so, sounds fantastic, yeah. actually. Yeah, if you're interested in doing a uh, Knife Junkie uh, list meetup or whatever, uh, you know, shoot Bob an email at bob at thenifejunkie.com or uh, call the listener line and... Uh, Maybe we can put something together, even if it's just uh, getting together in our hotel room. I was yeah. going to say sweet, but uh, hey, <laughs> I don't want to get carried away. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that'll be fun. That'll be fun. Cool. All right. Uh, any final thought from the Knife Junkie as we uh, round out episode number 76 of the Knife Junkie podcast? Uh, no, Jim. All I would have to say is uh, don't take dull for an answer, sir. Thanks for listening, everybody, to the Knife Junkie podcast. For Bob, the Knife Junkie DeMarco, I'm Jim, the Knife Newbie person. Thanks for listening. Thanks for listening to the Knife Junkie podcast. If you enjoyed the show, please rate and review at reviewthepodcast.com. For show notes for today's episode, additional resources, and to listen to past episodes, visit our website, theknifejunkie.com. You can also watch our latest videos on YouTube at theknifejunkie.com slash YouTube. Check out some great knife photos on theknifejunkie.com slash Instagram, and join our Facebook group at theknifejunkie.com slash Facebook. And if you have a question or comment, email them to bob at theknifejunkie.com or call our 24-7 listener line at 724-466-4487, and you may hear your comment or question answered on an upcoming episode of the Knife Junkie Podcast. Oh, 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 o